obviously you watched Reagan on TV. You were oh, yeah. alive when he was president. You were an adult when he was president. What did you think of Dennis Quaid as Ronald Reagan? You know what? At the start of the movie, I was like, you got to be kidding. No way. But after a while, he started to look like Reagan to me. And I started to buy it. Now, his his speech pattern and his mannerisms were good. Quaid did a good job on that. You can't change how you look that much. Yeah. But he did look, look like him pretty much. you know. And, and he looked like him more and more as the movie went on. <laughs> and then when I actually saw Reagan, it was like, oh, yeah, I forgot what he looked like. You know? Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Wants to the world. Hi, welcome to The Real Generation Gap. I'm BJ Kang. I'm Fred Satilli. And the movie we're reviewing today is the 2024 film Reagan. From actor to 40th president of the United States, this biopic covers Ronald Reagan going from small town boy all the way to the leader of the free world. Right. The last great American president, Ronald Reagan. I, I tell you, I truly believe that the reason he was the last great president was because of his faith. Mm. He was a faith-based, he lived a faith-based life, and he never turned his back on that, and it, he used that faith to fortify his position and everything. And I really believe that we won't have good unity in this country till we have unity of faith. Mm -hmm. I think when everybody pretty much agrees on a morality, that many, many of these problems will disappear. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I really love this movie, and not only did I love this movie, but I went to a theater that was very, very heavily attended, and people cheered during this movie, and at the end there was a standing ovation. Mm. So I was pretty proud of those people, and you know there was nobody wearing a red hat or anything, but <laughs> these were mostly people uh, from that era. I saw the movie uh, very near the Reagan Library, and uh, there was a lot of love for that man, that's for sure. And you see it because in every campaign since him, Every candidate has mentioned them, mm -hmm. whether disparagingly or in an exultant way. So he's a real landmark in our history, and I'm uh, very proud that the American people voted him into office. And his second election, he got 49 of 50 states, losing only Minnesota, which was Walter Mondale's home state. Yeah. So, you know, they had that little, you know, election. And what, there was an election fraud, but it was election bias. Yeah. You know. And you can understand that even though it's stupid. <laughs> so anyway, w give, go ahead and give me some of your impressions. I, I yeah, okay. So I, I'm I'm so as you know, I I'm pretty. I like to be very strict when it comes to or very scrutinizing when it comes to movies that depict any sort of like historical event or person. You know, and there's a lot of like you, you can already see what a good presidential movie has looked like before. Like if you've seen Lincoln with Daniel Day Lewis, or one of my personal favorites, which not a president but a vice president was Vice by i believe adam mckay which uh covered dick cheney as vice mm. president i like that one as vice president yeah. yeah who's currently having a resurgence right <laughs> now now all of a sudden we have somebody with an mm. i like dick button right so i, I was like, yeah. so i was pretty excited to see this movie because you know i like movies about history and i'm always very curious to see how well it does and in my opinion this one came off a little cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is true. Yeah. Like, like it or not. I don't want to admit that, but I was hoping you wouldn't say it, but you did anyway. <laughs> but yeah, it was. It was a puff piece. Uh -huh. It yeah. was, you know, this is our hero. And, <laughs> you know? But, but uh, he, he deserved adulation. But anyway, let me, let yeah. me uh, let you elaborate on some of that. Yeah, so uh, they honestly, they did a good job, I think, covering like basically his they did a good job covering the historical facts, which was basically from him being the president of the uh, Screen Actors Guild. I believe he was the president of the Screen Actors Guild all the way to, you know, his governorship in California to, you know, you know, winning a second term all the way even to his dementia that he unfortunately developed later. I'm um, sorry, his Alzheimer's that right. he unfortunately developed later in his life. So I think they did a good job covering um, you know, what happened during his presidency, I was not a fan of how they depicted him throughout it. The great thing was he didn't have the Alzheimer's while he was the president. Well, there is a he little, there has been yeah, a little yes. bit of debate I, about I, that. Yeah, I appreciate that. But it wasn't, it wasn't demonstrated in, in his, in real life. I, I was, I lived during that time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he, he began to decline at the end. Yeah, he did begin to, but Everything was pretty well figured out, and the country was running really well. We had a terrific economy, different terrific position in the world diplomatically. 
and all that were very strong America. Well, there, that was one of the one of the problems I did have, which was the film lacked depth because it it was afraid to touch certain topics or to just sort of like flesh out because you know there's no perfect president there's always going to be something they overlook or don't do well yeah it would be impossible yeah you know it's impossible uh and because of that the film lacked i mean yes it did cover the iran contra you know conspiracy or yeah yeah but there is there's a couple other things that i wish they had touched on to add more depth because it kind of went past that whole thing kind of fast the whole iran contra it's more of like a footnote well, you know what? Everything everything in the whole movie was that way. Yeah. Like the Star Wars thing, that was big. It was yeah. they like strategic you know, defense. Six or initiative. seven sentences. Yeah. Right, SDI, right. Good job. <laughs> they, they 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 you know had like six sentences about that. Mm-hmm. Then they had the six sentences about the Contras and the Sandinistas. Then yeah. they had six sentences, you know, they they covered a lot of ground because let's face it, this guy's life. It's you, it, a lot of ground to cover with two terms, yeah. You know, I didn't realize until I started talking with you, but they did focus on his young life a lot. It did, you know, it, they were trying to... It was a different momentum, wasn't it? Part but, of me was a little uncomfortable with that. It was like, they were trying to build this character about Ronald Reagan. And don't get me wrong, Ronald Reagan was a great communicator, and he was yeah, a very efficient leader. But um, it's kind of like they were trying to make it seem as if he was this way, like, his whole life. Like, he didn't, like, pick up things along the way. I mean, there are a couple of scenes like that, but it's kind of like it was um, uh, kind of, you know, it's like kind of almost like they're making a cartoon character out of Ronald Reagan, I would say. You know, he has little motifs and gimmicks and stuff like that, like as if his whole life he was always the crusader and stuff like that. He was. Mm. And he did tell the jokes all through his life. He was Mm -hmm. very charismatic that way. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't take himself so seriously. He was he was. You know, he served the Lord, and he he was well aware that he did that. Yeah, it wasn't me. It was kind of like we. Yeah. You know, he had a very thing. Now that they focused a lot on the Screen Actor Guild part, and that was a large part of his life. It was. He was, and uh, he did not expect to be the president. He was he fairly lost. advanced once he started running. Yeah. In now, his age. one of the things that they didn't say that you you may or may not know is. He had a tremendous learning disability really? until somewhere, until he was seven or eight years old. He needed glasses and no one knew. So they were like, well, why is he spastic? He can't play sports. Why can't he read? Why can't he do the, the, the poor kid couldn't see? He went on vacations with his family that they actually took him on the same vacation once they got him glasses. And he was like, wow, I didn't realize this lake was like this. He'd take him <laughs> to the lake or something. It was He really didn't see it. So they didn't really tell that. They just got right to the port like where he was the lifeguard. Yeah. But by that time, and, and they showed him as a little kid, all of a sudden he had glasses. Yeah. Right? And that's what made all the difference. They, they thought he was like mentally retarded mm. at, at first. Mm-hmm. But it was just because he didn't see well. Oh, okay. And it took him, everybody, people weren't that sharp then to figure out if you had dyslexia or something. They would never know. Mm-hmm. All right? I, I had an uncle with that. We just thought he was an idiot. I, you know, I kind of yeah. wish that we saw that in the movie instead of Ronald Reagan very commonly in the movie always going... It was like it was it was was not a fan of the writing. A lot of the the dialogue was very much like Ronald Reagan going like this is wrong. You know, we shouldn't <laughs> do this. And it was like every scene with Ronald Reagan was very much like this is wrong and you know, I'm doing my best to just do what's right for the country. Even though it's like but he Ron- was like that even on TV. Yeah, he's on TV, but let's see more about what he was like, you know, even behind the scenes and stuff like that. A lot of it yeah. was really just an embellishment of you know what he's commonly perceived as right yeah yeah he yeah what it was our our dear leader you can our dear leader movie you can make a movie where you you know you praise someone or even you know you portray them in a good light but you have to be willing to give depth to like you know your writing and your portrayal and like the character you can't just show them only the good side and you know going back to what i said about like there were certain things i wish they touched on uh, like they did show that he had some like controversies during his term as governor. But one thing I would have liked to have seen touched on was um, the Black Panther protests, I believe, at City Hall, which led to the assault rifles ban in California. Or the number one thing they 100 percent missed over was the AIDS crisis in America during his presidency. Well, that's because they didn't want to indict Tony Fauci, who was guilty of the whole do- the whole thing, you know, lock, stock and ba- uh-huh. anyway. Well, well, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But because um, that was a big like controversy about his 
you know, presidency and his legacy was his, uh, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of attention given to the AIDS crisis that was ha developing in America. There were bigger issues, you know, mm -hmm. at, at that time, at that time, the, the perspective on it was not like the retro perspective that we have now. Mm -hmm. Now we look back on it and it's like, well, that was a big issue, but there's it's so there are so many things like that in life you have to prioritize what you're going to focus on what are we going to do yeah right if you have a tragic economy you have to fix that mm -hmm. if you have a tragic medical thing you have to fix that but the AIDS crisis was not a tragic medical thing it was very compartment compartmentalized if you had a monogamous marriage and that kind of thing you were not going to have that problem mm -hmm. so it was considered a once again a breach of morality was like if you had that you were doing something you shouldn't have been doing mm -hmm. you know and the, most of america felt that way at the time mm -hmm. the, the vast population of america didn't care about that because they were never going to have that problem because mm -hmm. they were in monogamous relationships where everybody was clean mm -hmm. you know it was only in in a like a sub a sub a subculture mm -hmm. of a kind of deviant behavior at least at the time it was extremely deviant behavior yeah and uh so that's why it wasn't like everybody was aware of it and he denied it. It just wasn't a priority. Mm -hmm. And it was and it was largely from, not even from in America. You know, it was something that was imported here yeah. and that there was there was a couple other uh, medical things during that time, like Ebola viruses and things like that, that were that also happened, but they were put down. You know, or they ran out of steam, or wh yeah. whatever might have happened. So these uh, epidemics and stuff—they're they're, they're kind of constant. Mm -hmm. There's, some of them are more publicized than others. Some are more politicized than others, depending on who it happens to and why and how and everything that goes with it and how responsible America is for it and <laughs> that kind of good stuff, like yeah. the current one, right? But um, yeah, there there were so many aspects to his life. I, I don't remember. Uh, my in my own experience with this, I don't remember anybody caring that he was divorced. Now there probably were people who did. Uh, yeah, he was. But by that was time, was he the first divorced president? Or the first? I don't remember if he was the first. I, I don't know offhand either. Yeah, but yeah. it's it's sometimes it's a big issue. Yeah, it is. Right, and I, and I remember the our own dementia patient going, he's got the morals of an alley cat or something. It's like, well, so does your son, you know. <laughs> so you know, what I mean. So um, I don't at the time it was just Ron and Nancy. Yeah. And Jane Wyman was, you know, it was she was a reality like she had had a career and they, they had once been. But I think that their separation might have been pretty amicable. Yeah. They, the, you know, another thing was that like that was I'm sure there was probably a lot more to their divorce instead of her just going, you know, I want to focus on my career and Ronald Reagan just going, oh, we should focus on doing something with our influence. Like, you know, a, a divorce, there's a lot more aspects to that than just like, you know. I'm not so sure. You could be 100% right. Yeah. But I'm not so sure. Uh, two mature adults could say, look, we're just going in different directions. Okay. You know, let, let's hang it up. It doesn't have to be this you know, soul crushing thing. Although, you know, he, they, they showed where he had some sadness and everything. Yeah. He wasn't happy to be doing this, but it wasn't, it wasn't a big factor either in the story, in the movie. And I don't believe it was a real big factor in real life in my memory. Yeah. Cause I, I'm going through what I can remember about this. This is about him. You, yeah. you know, and I, I remember a country that was really in favor of him. Mm hmm. I mean, there and and he had no opponents. Mondale it was like, well, you've got to be kidding. You know that that is. You know, something... It's like when we put McCain up against Obama. It was like, what are you kidding? <laughs> I I can't believe they made the election as close as it was. <laughs> you know, because McCain threw the election, yeah. and then Romney threw the election. So you know, th these are guys who didn't fight. Mm -hmm. You know, they campaigned a little, mm -hmm. but they it, they didn't really put any pressure on. And that that you know that's an aspect. Reagan had more mm -hmm. pressure from his own party. Than from without the party. Yeah. The, you know, that's an aspect I kind of want to draw on from you, which is, you know, you obviously lived during that time. You know, I, the oldest. As an adult. Yeah. The oldest president. Yeah. I, you know, the oldest I ever was to really like even comprehend a, the president was Obama, you know. <laughs> but um, so like Dennis, so <laughs> obviously you watched Reagan on TV. You were oh, yeah. alive when he was president. You were an adult when he was president. What did you think of Dennis Quaid as Ronald Reagan? You know what? At the start of the movie, I was like, you got to be kidding. No way. But after a while, he started to look like Reagan to me. 
and I started to buy it. Now, his, his speech pattern and his mannerisms were good. Quaid did a good job on that. You can't change how you look that much. Yeah. But he did look, look like him pretty much. You know, and he looked like him more and more as the movie went on. <laughs> and the one I actually saw Reagan, it was like, oh, yeah, I forgot what he looked like. <laughs> you know, it was like I, I had bought it so much, uh-huh. you know. But one of my favorite jokes back then was, I, I, I could be wrong about this, but I think Cheech Marin okay. uh, was the one who said, I could be wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure it was him. And he said, oh, the Hispanic community, we like Reagan. We don't know anything about his policies. We just like his haircut. That's a guy you can be proud to go low riding with because Reagan dyed his hair black and it looked ridiculous, you know? And it was, but there were people who liked that. Yeah. And that was a good joke for whoever told it. Mm-hmm. I'm giving it to, to Cheech Marin. Uh-huh. I, I, I could be wrong, but mm-hmm. that was a clever thing that he had this Hollywood look. Yeah. Like Reagan always, he didn't, you know, he was a more made up, you know, like Nixon didn't try to be good looking. No. You know, and it was funny because uh, just before the election, I went in my friend's house and his father was an executive at Midlantic Corporation. Mm-hmm. And as I walked through the house, his father said, hey, you going for the peanut head or the prune face? And I said, ah, the prune face. And he goes, ah, you're a good boy, Fred. You yeah. know, and that was, that's the way he characterized them. You yeah. know? But uh, he was at the time really old for a president. Yeah, he Not was like, the, he was the oldest president to have taken office at the time. Yeah, at the time. And and I do remember when he said about Mondale when he said during the debate, I will not meet. He said I I won't I won't let age be an issue. I won't let I won't exploit the fact of Walter Mondale's youth and inexperience yeah. compared to mine. And at one point, uh, I I believe he was running against one of the Kennedys for something. And they said, they asked him some question, and he said, well, at least I didn't have to ask my mother if I could run. You know, <laughs> the, running the family. So he, he had a lot of good shots in yeah. on people. I mean, he, he was a good stand-up comedian, and he did those Russian jokes. That he, yeah, that he, the, that he the film did do a good job of cat. Yeah, I did think it was a little interesting. I, I You know, I thought it was cool. I'll say that. I thought it was cool how they sort of inserted Dennis Quaid, uh, Ronald Reagan, into the actual footage of like you know those speeches and stuff because you would see the real Walter Mondale next to Dennis Quaid Reagan. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was a that cool. Was, effect. It was like magic. Yeah, it was, yeah. was kind of like magic. I did have an issue with certain parts where like this, uh, you know, this some of the special effects kind of didn't look great. You know, it was at those moments where you kind of tell they didn't have like an amazing amazing budget for CGI or just like you know uh, a gr- uh, the best green screen in certain scenes. Also, there were some questionable sort of effects or just sort of like, you know, kind of like the slow motion. Like uh, when he, for example, when the assassination attempts right. happens, you know, there's a lot of sort of like weird flashing and like, you know, um, slow motion effects that were meant to just sort of drive an artificial sense of excitement around that, I think. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't realize that. I, I wasn't tuned into that. Mm hmm. You know, sometimes I get sucked in and the magic of what they're doing <laughs> completely works on me. Yeah. I, I can't help being biased myself. I really like the guy. I thought he did a great job. I, I he he was just just like Donald Trump. He was he was tortured by, you know, society. They, they did all kind of mean tricks to him. There was there was all kind of like uh, dirty, underhanded publicity of stuff. They made up things that didn't happen. They really beat him up. His own party did. And he surmounted all that, mm-hmm. and we, we have that. And then it, it was interesting to me because I said to somebody in the theater, well, this movie couldn't come at a better time. And the, they said, well, why do you say that? And I said, well, we have the same kind of person now just before the election. It's the same dynamic with the, you know, with the Russian. And at that time, it was Russia, Russia, Russia. Yeah, you know, the, the Chinese USSR. Are, yeah. You know, and, and the, the person like said, like, I, I, I didn't see any connection or something. I was like, you didn't see any connection. This was like, this was such a pro MAGA style thing. The message was, you know, America first. He said, we win, you lose. That's the policy, right? And then we have a guy now running who's like, yeah, we'll put tariffs on. We'll make you pay for this. We'll make you pay for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. We'll make you pay. You know, we we have a Democrat party that's screaming, pay your fair share all the time. And then they deride the guy that wants the world to pay their for, fair share for all that we do. Yeah. People don't realize, America, if our Navy didn't protect the shipping lines of the world, we could not have the international commerce that we do have. Yeah. If we didn't just look at Japan as the perfect example, 
right? We're, we protect their commerce with our Navy. Mm -hmm. and if that breaks down, we're going to have full-scale piracy and world trade will be nothing like it was for the past 50, 60 years. That, that is a fun fact, you know, just a little fun fact. The United States Navy was created to combat pirates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. Along with the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I really, I, I enjoyed the movie. I enjoyed watching the movie. It was very uplifting. I, I said to one person, I was leaving the theater, and I said, hey, best movie since Top Gun, right? The guy went like, yeah, that's right. You know, <laughs> well, I found one of those guys. Yeah. It, it was super rah-rah America. Mm -hmm. I think we need that. I think it's, I think that alone is a unifying thing. Mm -hmm. Now there are plenty of people that are going to just see this movie and just because, because of their own agenda, they're just going to like hate everything. Yeah. I didn't, you know, I, I did think the movie did have an uplifting message, which was, you know, American unity and people should feel like, you know, they have to, people should feel like they should be able to unify behind their president. And, um, you know, I think that's a good message. I was not a fan of like a lot of the, the, the cheesiness that really came, <laughs> you know, that came with, you know, a lot of. There truly was. Yes. Yeah, there truly was. Yeah. It, it was distracting. even A little bit. It was yes. like, all right, already. OK. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. That's Ronald Reagan, great president, funny, right. you know, handsome and stuff like that. I was kind of hoping, you know, you always say that I always try to want to see more of the people out of these movies. It's like there's no way Ronald Reagan was like, you know that funny or i mean he was funny don't get me wrong he, he was really he you, was you, funny you go charming. on youtube and watch him just tell jokes for like an I've, hour. I've seen them i've seen those speeches yeah but he's not, not the speeches just the jokes he's not like that all the time you know he's not the no the, other, the rest of the time he was very tough yeah he was very he, he felt like he had the backing of the creator uh -huh. and he felt like everything he was doing was morally correct mm -hmm. and and uh that, that to have that kind of confidence is a real big deal yeah he, he wasn't looking at polls, you know, what do the woke say or whatever. He, he didn't pander to groups <laughs> yeah. at any time. He, he didn't try to draw in ethnic groups or, mm -hmm. you know, put on a fake voice or something like you hear people do now. He, he, was, he kept it really real the whole time. Yeah. And like him or hate him, you, you knew what to get. You know what you were getting. And they sure did know when they had those hostages in Iran, they knew what they were getting. Because when he became the president, they released those 51 people mm -hmm immediately because mm -hmm. they knew he was going to nuke them mm -hmm. you know he was going to send in heavy i mean he they were going to have to pay for those hostages and they knew it mm -hmm. and it's important for the leader of your country who, when you have that strength you don't want to use it the potential right yeah and he was the big guy in the room and when he told when he said yet to the russian gorbachev yeah. yes right and yeah and gorby was trying to be the peacemaker but Reagan, he he didn't he didn't allow that weakness to make him weak. You know, speaking of the Russians, what did you think of like that whole aspect of the film that of like the entire story of Reagan is told from an ex KGB spy? Like, what did you think of that aspect? I can't I believe, believe was, I didn't bring that up because it was played it was my by John Voight. Yeah, yeah, my primary. Yeah, yeah, and what a job he did, right? Mm -hmm. I thought he was believable that he was the you know, yeah, yeah. For for those for those of you who haven't seen the movie or seen this review or something. The whole story of Reagan's career was told by a Soviet spy who was assigned to spy on him, even like not from youth, but as soon as he became on the scene as a leader, Russia wanted to keep tabs keep on, tabs him. on yeah. him and and everything. And this is the guy who did. He was ex KGB. He was retired now, and a current KGB guy came in and said, "Hey, what can you tell me about you know Ronald Reagan and his career?" And so. John Voigt, the KGB guy, starts to tell him everything he knows. And the, the uh, current younger agent finds it all hard to believe. Well, who would believe that there could be such a Superman, <laughs> you know? And, he's, and John Voigt, obviously, at that point in his life, he, because he was so intimately connected with the life of Ronald Reagan, he had nothing but respect and admiration for him. I think that was like, to me, that was part of the cheesiness a little bit. It's like, because it's like, <laughs> It's one thing to have your supporters expect respect and admire you, but to have a Russian KGB agent talk about you even in the same way is a little cheesy in and of itself. It kind of I'll tell you what happens when you get old. Okay. When you get old, you look back on things and you realize who did what. Right? I had a stepfather. What was he like? How did I react to him? At the time, I reacted one way. Now in retrospect, 
I see him very differently. Mm -hmm. Teachers that I had in school who I completely disregarded, who I, yeah, whatever, the teacher, they're, you know, they're, they're useless, right? Mm -hmm. Now I look back and I think, wow, what a great man this was. You know, Dr. Kranz, Dr. Workinger, these guys, they, they really were Alpha M. Garth. They really were trying to make a difference in these kids. They were trying to educate them and, and move them along and, and broaden their mind and their, their analytic thinking ability and all that good stuff. There were some real heroes mm. that I took for granted. Yeah. And, and I think that it's very possible that a very old man like that, he, I, he, I think you would almost have a, like a love affair with somebody that you studied, right? You study somebody your whole life. Yeah. And after a while, either you, you disregard them, there's a big waste of time, yeah. or you appreciate their virtues mm -hmm. and you appreciate their frailties. But either way, you appreciate. Yeah. So, well, he went through this hard patch, but he got through it. Well, he was a little bit of a tyrant and we, we handled it. Mm -hmm. Well, he was a little bit of a, you know, he had a weak moment or, or he was uh, inappropriately, uh, you know, tyrannical. Yeah. You know, that, that's what you can be, right? And, and uh, I think when, when you're intimate with somebody like that, after a while, you kind of, you kind of fall in love with them. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you fall in love with your perception of them. You, it's because it's a big part of your life. Uh -huh. that, that was an ass. You know, so another thing about this movie is that this movie is based off of a book that was written. It's called The Crusader, I believe. I forgot who right. the book author was. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And so that aspect is also from the book, which is essentially it was a bunch of KGB based off of real documents and reports from a bunch of KGB agents that were you know, supposed to keep track on Ronald Reagan. So that was an aspect they incorporated from the book into the movie. Right. That, that According to the book, according, yeah, according to the to movie, the that's how he was characterized. Yeah, that's how they, yeah. the KGB guy said, Ray, he goes, oh, this guy. This guy's not a two-bit politician that can yeah. be bought. He's not shallow. He's a he's a crusader. Yeah. And those people are few and far between. Who do you? Uh, I know did, one in my life. I can tell you that. Did the movie ever say who the younger, like sort of KGB guy was? No, he he was just a guy who imposed himself. He knocked on the door and went. Yeah, I, I kind of comrade. I had a, yeah. and he goes comrade. I kind of had a I kind of had a, a hunch that it was like Putin or something, like a young Putin, because he was a KGB. You want to yeah. read that in? I, that, read that, that, I, I, that was my little like fan theory right there. It's like uh -huh. that's that's young Putin right there. Yeah, yeah, you know, starting off real. But no, yeah, <laughs> but, but <laughs> I that, don't think so. But yeah. but but that what that was a kind of a clever idea. To ha I didn't have that idea, but that was, you know. Somebody in his administration, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Because Putin's had an administration for quite a few years now. Chip. I am about to start the biggest war of this century, and I'm not going to fire a single shot. You're going to blow up eight years of diplomacy. Well, if you think that got their undies in a what? you just wait. What did the president know, and when did he know it? What would you have me do? I want you to fight! Gorbachev, tear down this wall. The thing we didn't mention was the Gorbachev tear down that wall moment. Yeah. And that was that was something that I had completely forgotten about, that he had that speechwriter who was kind of the outsider, Dana, yeah. the hippie guy, right? Yeah. And who, who came along and, and uh, Reagan sort of adopted him like, you have talent. Yeah. You know, what do you think? Let's hear what you think. It's always interesting to hear like the other, like a different voice. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, let's get this guy's take on it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I often think if I ever somehow through some bizarre twist of fate uh, w was put in a like a leadership role like that, I have a couple of friends that I would call, like quietly, privately, <laughs> and say like, listen, Russ, this is what I'm dealing with. What do you think about this? Because he's like a sage wisdom guy in my life, right? Yeah. So it'd be like, Okay, like I, I almost don't know what I think until I know what he thinks. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I would say that, wouldn't I? I have done that, haven't I? Yeah. You know, sometimes somebody else has a better perspective on you than you do. Reagan, j Reagan, just like every president, had good and bad advisors. Yeah. And it, you're you're torn between all that, and there's there's political favors that that move your decisions or yeah. color your decisions. But Reagan managed to stay pretty well aloof of that fray. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't. He wasn't at the whim of sycophants or anything. He he kept his identity pretty strong, and I'm proud of him for that. I I the movie, 
the movie wasn't as good as Reagan's presidency. Like, <laughs> had the movie been, yeah. you know, I uh, give Reagan, Reagan's presidency a, presidency a nine. <laughs> the president, yes, a the, separate the, rating. The, the rating presidency for- <laughs> gets a nine. The movie gets a six. Okay. Yeah. I would say I, I wouldn't know what Reagan's presidency was like. I wasn't alive then. Um, I give the movie a five, honestly. So pretty close in rating there. You mm-hmm. know, I'm glad to see that you're able to sort of separate, you know, that political bias from not yeah, recognizing the, when a movie could do better. Right. Yeah. And th- that really was the case. Yeah. I but I didn't take away from my enjoyment of the movie. I That's loved good. I loved watching the audience. Yeah. And uh I was glad that somebody made a puff piece like this at this particular time. <laughs> yeah. You know, it will be completely suppressed by the media. I would almost I would almost be I would almost uh uh, sort of have a hunch that maybe there is a reason why this puff piece came out oh, right now. No question. You know, election it, year, you know. Yeah, yeah. There, you know, you like, know what you know what Stephen K. Bannon says. Yeah. There are no conspiracies, but there are no coincidences, <laughs> right? So yeah. yeah, this is timed, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a political tool. Okay. And shame on them, but hooray for them because the whole rest of the media is a political tool the other way. Fair enough. So I, you know, it's like yeah, you want to condemn that? Look at yourself. Get the mirror. Get the mirror. You know, that's you. Yeah. Right. So anyway, thanks for uh, recommending this movie. Yeah. I guess we kind of agreed on. Yeah, it. Yeah, we we did. You know, it was timely, and uh, it was fun to watch and. Big both history nuts. I sure hope everybody watches it before they send in their mail in ballot. <laughs> you know, uh, thank you very much for watching this episode of the Real Generation Gap. And make sure to leave a comment down below. Um, what's your favorite, say, you know, presidential biopic or even just, you know, historical movie that you think does a good job? And what did you guys think of Reagan? Did you guys think it was just a cheesy puff piece or perhaps, you know, an inspiring story of a real man? Uh, make sure to tell us that down below in the comments and make sure to join us for the next episode. Thank you very much.